Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Mindy here. I hope you've had an amazing week. Today I'm going to dive into a bunch of mini fragrances that I ordered on a recent fragrance net purchase. I love mini fragrances. I love the bottles. I think they're fun. I think they're super functional if you're ordering them to travel with, but it's also a great way to explore fragrance with very little risk. Most of these were in the range of six to ten dollars, so not an expensive way to test out each one of these fragrances. Now I will say as I was playing with them this week, I did not look at the notes first. With a couple of them I knew what the notes might be or I knew what they were, but for the most part I went into it unbiased and really tried to decide for myself if I thought these would be a good full bottle worthy type fragrance or maybe not so much. I then took some notes in my spreadsheet where I track my fragrances and then dug into the notes to understand what I was smelling after the fact. So I thought that'd be a really fun way to play with some of these fragrances. So without further ado, let's jump on into these fragrances. Just a quick note, I did rank them from the fragrance that I liked the least to the fragrance that I liked the most. So I will be starting out with those that I probably wouldn't be buying a full bottle of. Okay, the first fragrance that I have here is Beverly Hills by Giorgio. And this is a very vintagey smelling fragrance. I only have the splash here. And this is not my type of fragrance. What I did notice from this one is that it has a very strong floral presence. It has that vintagey vibe that I referenced before. And I didn't particularly like this one on my skin. I put it on my skin and I found it to be a little bit pungent at first, but really overpowering to my nose. There was a lot going on here, so I didn't let it sit on my skin long enough. But what I will say is that after a while on the tester strip, I did become a little bit more accustomed to it. It toned down a little bit and I did sort of enjoy the sillage from the tester strip, but not when I press my nose up against it. What I also noticed was that it almost had a little bit of a smoky vibe to it as I was playing with it. I don't know where that smokiness is coming from. So there's orange blossom, apricot, bergamot. In the mid, there's a lot of florals here. So tuberose, gardenia, ylang ylang, jasmine, orchid, rose. And then at the base is oak moss, chamomile, sandalwood, amber, musk, vanilla, patchouli, and cedar. So maybe it's coming from that cedar, possibly the oak moss. I'm really not sure, but it is very strong. If you like florals in your fragrances, if you really dig that vintagey vibe, I do think this is one to test out. It's quite affordable, even in the full size bottle. So one that you might want to get your hands on. This is the type of fragrance that I do stay away from because it is a little overly floral to my nose, but that's not to say if someone walked by me wearing this that I wouldn't mind the sillage. Again, that is Beverly Hills by Giorgio. The next fragrance that I have here is Signature by Mont Blanc. Now this isn't a fragrance that I would usually pick up, but I've heard a lot of people speak about this one, so naturally I was curious about it myself. So the first thing I get when I smell this fragrance is kind of a clean vibe, a clean sort of fresh vibe to it. I think about it in a way that has a little bit of creaminess to it as well. So think a nice classy lotion. It has that sort of vibe to it. I could almost see a little bit of a tropical vibe here as well. As I was playing with it on a tester strip, I was pressing my nose to it deeply, and this was before I knew what the notes profile was in this one. I did feel like there was a tropical vibe lingering very much so there in the background, and I found out afterward that this does have ylang ylang in it. So that kind of answered why I was feeling that from this fragrance, and I do think it is very nice. I also think about this one as, you know, you stay at a really nice hotel and you lay your head down on the pillow and you smell the freshly laundered sheets, maybe with a high-end detergent. Sort of smells like that as well to me. I'm not much into clean fragrances like this, but I do think this is a nice one. And for somebody who loves clean, fresh type fragrances, I do think this is one you should check out. Again, that is Mont Blanc Signature. Okay, the next fragrance that I have here is Eros Pour Femme 
by Versace and this is the EDP version. So this fragrance also has kind of a kind of a clean vibe to it. You definitely pick up citrus when you first smell it. And to my nose, this is an alluring fragrance. It's sort of in the vein to my nose of Coco Mademoiselle or Chanel Chance where it is kind of sophisticated. It has a classy presence to it. This is actually classified as a floral woody musk. And yeah, I find this to be quite nice. It has lemon, pomegranate, bergamot, there's lemon blossom, jasmine sandback, jasmine, peony, musk, and broxen. There's a woody note here as well, sort of that woody component that you do pick up and it smells quite nice. And there's also sandalwood in here. You definitely pick up the citrus aspect in this fragrance, not so much as you would in Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue or in Funny by Moschino or even I Love Love by Moschino. This is classified, as I mentioned, as a floral woody musk. And so there's a little bit more to this fragrance than just that. And yeah, I think it's really nice. The one thing I will say is when I first put it on my skin, I do have a splash here. I found it to be heavily present on that alcohol smell. It had to settle into my skin a little bit for me to start to appreciate the scent profile, but that did diminish after a minute or two. This one I do find to have a little bit of a masculine presence to it. I do think a man might feel comfortable wearing this one, though it is marketed more towards women. I like the fragrance, I like the scent profile. But I do think other fragrances in this scent profile, this type of vein, would probably be more my style, so I don't think I'd be reaching for this one much. I do need to play with it a little bit more to get more acclimated to the scent profile. That is Eros Pour Femme by Versace, and this is the EDP. Okay, the next fragrance that I have here is Funny by Moschino. A subscriber recommended this fragrance to me, and so of course I went to go read the reviews a while back, and one of the interesting things here is that a lot of the reviews were quite funny. I was definitely drawn in by the description of this fragrance, so I wanted to give it a try. So I'll go ahead and share my thoughts. The first thing it made me think of is fragrances like I Love Love. This is a mini that I picked up quite a while back. And it also made me think of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. It's sort of a fresh citrus fragrance like those. Whereas this one is a little bit more heavy on the lemon. I think there's also orange in here, there's grapefruit. But this one, Funny by Moschino, goes a little bit deeper for me. There is also green tea, amber, and oak moss in this fragrance, so it gives it a little bit more character, maybe even a little bit more depth than this fragrance. I do find that there are some similarities between these two fragrances. They start off quite similarly to one another in my side-by-side -side comparison, but they do deviate after they're on the skin for a few minutes, and I do think that this one is different than I Love Love, and it wouldn't be redundant in anyone's collection. Now I'm going to go with another hotel reference here. Funny sort of reminds me of walking into a luxurious, nice, fancy hotel and that scent that you smell when you walk in. It is very fresh in that way. It's classy in that way. I don't know if I would consider this fragrance to be elegant so much, but it does smell very nice. Between both of these fragrances, I find them to be happy. I find them to be cheerful. I find them to be bright and uplifting. So if you're looking for something to boost your mood, boost your spirits, both of these seem to be fairly affordable and I do enjoy and recommend both of them. This is Funny by Moschino and this is I Love Love by Moschino as well. Next up is Dolce & Gabbana Pour Femme. When I think about all of the recommendations that come through for Signature Scents, this one does come up quite frequently. And I think that's because it's a very well-rounded fragrance. It's one that is generally high likability and also one that can be very much used in a business or professional setting. I honestly can't believe how long it took me to get this one in my hands to finally sample it, but I'm glad I did because to me, I do consider this one to be full bottle worthy. This is one that I'll be putting on my wants list and exploring in future buys. I actually have an Armoff dupe. I believe it's called Italiano Donna. I'm definitely interested in comparing these side by side. As it stands now, I think 
I actually prefer Pour Femme by Dolce & Gabbana, which isn't always the case when I'm looking at dupes, clones. I often like the clones or the dupes better because they tend to have better longevity. They might have a little bit more strength to them, but I'll play around with that one and explore it a little bit more, let you guys know what my thoughts are there. I definitely pick up the marshmallow that everybody talks about here, but I do find it to be done in a sophisticated way. Yes, it's sweet, but it's not as sweet as, say, an Ari by Ariana Grande. Now, I don't mean that as a dig because I absolutely love Ari by Ariana Grande. It's a sweet, playful, flirty, fun fragrance. And this one may not be as much in that, you know, flirty category. Again, I find this one to be very office friendly. I think it's business appropriate. It has some raspberry lingering in the background. So that's where some of that sweetness comes from in conjunction with the marshmallow. But I find this to be a beautiful scent. It's a little bit powdery. There is heliotrope in here. There's also vanilla and neroli, mandarin orange, orange blossom, jasmine. Just an overall beautiful fragrance. One that would be an easy reach easily a signature scent for somebody that is Dolce & Gabbana, Poor Femme. The next fragrance that I have here is Fancy Love by Jessica Simpson. This is one that I see almost every time that I walk into a Marshalls or a Ross. It's always discounted in the full bottle size and I definitely wanted to get my nose on it when I saw that it was available in a mini. Now this one comes with an atomizer, which I truly appreciate. I enjoy the fact that you can kind of spray it on your clothes and play with it in that way. Most of these others are splashes here, which is also totally fine when I play with them, but I definitely prefer having the ability to have the atomizer and spray the fragrance. Now on my skin, Fancy Love is quite soft, but it is sweet, it's pretty, it's feminine. This one has very little to do with the original Fancy by Jessica Simpson. That one has a little bit of a fruity vibe to it. It's more caramelic. Whereas this one has more of that floral aspect to it. There's a little bit of creaminess here, maybe a little bit lactonic when you think about how it plays with the peach. And there's also some woody undertones here. All that's listed is woodsy notes. There's musk, amber, and patchouli in the base. And truly, I find this to be quite a nice fragrance. I almost feel like I'm getting a vanillic presence here as well, but that is not listed in the notes, so maybe it's something else that I'm picking up on. As this dries down, I do like it more and more. I do think it is quite soft on its presence and its projection, so if you like a fragrance that is beast mode, this might not be the one for you, but I'll definitely consider a full bottle here because I do find it to be a pretty scent, and this is fairly affordable. I don't know the exact price range, but what I've seen is that it is, generally speaking, under $25, maybe even $20. So an easy reach type of fragrance. I could see somebody who prefers their perfume to be a little bit more soft, a little bit more subtle, maybe even skin scent like. This might be a really good option for you. Again, that is Fancy Love by Jessica Simpson. The next fragrance that I have here is Illicit by Jimmy Choo. And wow, what a pleasant surprise this fragrance was. Immediately upon playing with it, I did feel like I was picking up on sort of a gourmand vibe. I also understand why this is called illicit because there is a seductive quality, a little bit of a sensual quality to this fragrance that I really do enjoy. Now, after I started playing around and looking at the notes, I was completely surprised to see that there was honey in here. I am a little bit finicky when it comes to honey, so I'm surprised by how much I like this, knowing that honey is the most recognized accord in this fragrance. There's also caramel in here, which also gives off that gourmand vibe that I was initially picking up. This one is sweet, it's a little bit spicy, and overall one that I would absolutely love to wear. I see this being perfectly appropriate for a date night or a night out with your friends, a really fun fragrance to wear, one that I think people will wanna lean in to smell. Yeah, this is just an overall beautiful fragrance. I think this will go on my wants list in a full bottle. Definitely enjoy this one and recommend trying it out if you like that gourmand vibe, a little bit of a sensual vibe as well. 
that is Illicit by Jimmy Choo. Now the next and last fragrance that I have here is Nirvana Bourbon by Elizabeth and James. I thought this mini was super cute, but I was also secretly hoping that it would come with an atomizer. I already have the roller ball for this fragrance and I'm craving the ability to spray it on my clothes because the longevity with this one is not super strong and I kind of thought if I could spray it on my clothes, maybe I could get a little bit more wear out of this one, a little bit more projection and of course a little bit more longevity. Now I am slapping myself for not picking this one up at Kohl's quite a while back when I saw it there. It was on a pretty steep discount in a full bottle size. Since then, I have not been able to find it, so I did buy the mini in this instance, but I would love to have this one in full bottle form. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on all of these minis that I've had a blast playing with. I wanted to mention that I was unable to send out one of the decants that I had in my giveaway recently. I do still have it and I want to get it out to a subscriber, so I will do another randomized drawing on the people that commented on my Utopia Vanilla Coco 21 fragrance video. I hope you all have a phenomenal weekend. I hope you have a lot to be grateful and thankful for. And until next time, I'll see you soon.